Dzień dobry. Z jeszcze większą radością, że już jesteśmy, witam. Teraz mam przyjemność przywitać dwóch prelegentów, pana Macieja Piwowarczuka i pana Pawła Michowskiego. I teraz Michał Piwowarczyk, Paweł Michowski, Michał Piwowarczyk is the president of the Foundation for Great History. Uh, so um, he's the creator, the documentalist, creator of creating the uh, educational tools. He was the editor in one of the biggest multimedia companies. He teaches at the university as VPS project design masterclass experts uh, of Innovative Institute and the second speaker. Mr. Paweł Mankowski, here lead in 11-bit studios, known for those who are by a game and for other games as postponed a uh, graduate of the uh, University of Wrocław in a uh, gaming um, industry since 2004. But uh, he says that he's been dealing with games since the 90s. Men, uh, two men present um, the lecture about interactive games and how to use interactive games in education. So you have 30 minutes and then you will have a shorter break. So let's say you have time until uh, 20 to 1. autorami gry This War of Mine, e, tutaj lekko swobodne tłumaczenie Ta Moja Wojna. E, jeśli nie są Państwo z tym zaznajomieni, jest to gra, e, która ukazała się... If you don't know the game, it was published in 2014, the game as a regular product, commercial product. So the game that was present in um, many different places, it was a great success. It was uh, widely accepted by critics around the world and received over 100 awards. Minister of Culture Award for the contribution to the national heritage in digital uh, culture. Some time ago, uh, we, we had a, an idea, I mean, administrative circle had an idea that the War of Mind should be a lecture. Uh, should be on the reading list at school and we uh, are working on that uh, we are still trying to um, do it so we will explain how, if this game can be perceived as a, um, a reading list uh, as a book from the reading list uh, so as something obligatory in the polish education to discuss during the lesson but we shouldn't think about the games because the game is the product of entertainment and the game is to uh, bring joy and fun but also a game has a great educational potential it broadens uh, the form of uh, books on the reading list how we look on the books on the reading list because the potential is in innovativeness we do not only provide knowledge and uh, drive uh, thinking or, or desire to think and um, with proper knowledge understood in a traditional way but uh, we also proper knowledge in a very innovative way because uh, game uh, it's important to apply games because games use a, a language that is natural to students because students will always play computer games and uh, it's uh, our task that we will provide uh, for students valid content a lecture, a good, a good reading book uh, should um, provide entertainment and teach. And I think this war of mine uh, is like that in Poland for adults. Uh, so um, it, it depends on different countries, of course. The reading list of, of books uh, depends on different countries. In Germany, the War of Mind game uh, is allowed uh, for students who are 16. Uh, in Germany, the rating is different. According to PEGI, according to European uh, rating, this game is for adults only due to the fact that it uh, involves uh, war, uh, suffering, death, and so on and so forth. 
na tej, tej grze nie gramy żołnierzami. Uh, we don't play uh, soldiers uh, in this game. We play civilians. Civilians who, who are trying to survive the war and they have a great uh, experience of the war. So we want to present the real life of citizens during the war. A game which uh, has a lot of references to many different Polish books on the reading list at school. Uh, so I will uh, now refer to one book, Pamiętnik from uh, Powstanie, a book by Miuron Białoszewski. I will show you uh, several pictures from the game. So we uh, live uh, their lives of the people. Um, in, sometimes uh, we um, leave um, what, what's on the picture. Sometimes the photos are uh, our stories. Uh, screens are in English, but uh, it's actually uh, the game has been localized into Polish and um, I think 14 other languages. And it has this very um, a beautiful visual side. It looks a bit like a book, um, the visual side of the game. Um, we don't have much time, so we will move on. We treat this as a tool uh, for talking about important issues. We teach uh, uh, such things uh, during Polish lessons or ethics lessons. Of course, you can use this game in a different way. Um, we managed uh, to interest a lot of students and a lot of teachers. Uh, it ha has been used by teachers in the United States, Australia, Canada, in high schools in Sweden, Germany, Norway. Um, the war, this war of mine ha, has been uh, applied by many different teachers. It was also um, the idea of using this game was proposed on one of the convent. And one of the teachers proposed uh, to use uh, this war of mine game. Then many teachers uh, contacted us from high schools. Teachers from high schools contacted us and then they applied this during their lessons. It wasn't, of course, formal. Um, it was something additional they did during the classes. The word of mind can be used during Polish lessons, history, ethics, because uh, in the game there are many references uh, to the 90s, to Sarajevo conflict. This is the description of uh, the Pamiętnik from the Powstanie, memoir from the uprising. Let's say it's a Polish, it's English translation of the, the book. Uh, Miron Białoszewski, he wrote the book. And uh, this is the book about civilians during the uprising. Our book is about uprising and civilians, uh, is about uh, civilians during the, the um, created uprising. So it's not about um, the same as in the book. Uh, it tackles very similar issues, but not in a literal linear way, but uh, through the making decisions creating or making decisions and students can make their decisions on their own and that's why uh, the player is uh, co um, co-creating the storytelling in the in this um, in this game this war of mine has a great potential for many different reasons it talks about common people. It's the player can uh, make the, their own decisions. The game is, is not moral, giving the right and wrong answers. The player needs to be very uh, move move freely between good and evil, because at the end the player assesses himself or herself um, on their own. I in the past I prepared. Um, some kind of um, basics of uh, uh, what, what kind of books are used during the ethics uh, lesson in uh, secondary schools and so on and so forth. And I have, was analyzing the curriculum 
So the aim of the ethics lesson is to develop a social um, a sensitivity, for example, and should get to know good and evil uh, value you dignity, freedom, free responsibility, um, thinks and discusses moral aspects of war and peace. And teachers need to uh, develop uh, these skills in students. And teachers have a lot of tools to do so. And of course, books from the reading list are one of the tools, but the game uh, perfectly um, tackles these aspects. War uh, is mine. Uh, actually refers to the curriculum one-to-one, -one, like it perfectly reflects the curriculum in 100%. So what about uh, realizing this lesson? It's important that uh, students apply the modern technologies, modern IT technologies. This is e-curriculum. So I think the game answers to this question. Uh, this is the longer quote. Dr. Jacek Friedrich said that thinking is a very complex process, a cognitive process that is well reflected in the metaphor of the game. The game is a simulation, so we created a simulation. It is a bit simplified, but the, our aim was to uh, simulate uh, life during the war. So we wanted the game to be very emotional, but also cumbersome. When we were creating the game, we knew that this game is going to be sad, heavy, uh, but that was the life during the war. And we asked ourselves why games wouldn't be um, so serious like uh, war movies. In Poland, we have a lot of movies about war because of our history. Um, uh, Andrzej Wajda made a lot of movies about war, so uh, we refer to Polish cinematography in this aspect. Um, about the lesson, how should it look like? Um, well, maybe we can um, talk about it later after the presentation, but this is our proposition when we were um, preparing um, the game. Um, we, pre we offered some kind of uh, script. So the question is, how pe do people behave at war? Uh, and how would I behave? Uh, questions. Uh, so predicted achievements uh, are here. The method is quite simple because we give this game to schools for free. So if you would like to apply this game, you will receive this game uh, for free, unlimited amount. This is not a problem. We don't get any profit from the game. This is uh, just our mission. Uh, we earn money somewhere else, and I have to say that we earn well. <laughs> so uh, we give students game, and uh, we need to give them some time because of of course, everything should be supervised, uh, but we will get back to it later after much a uh, speech. And when students play the game, uh, it's worth to talk later with the students what uh, happened in the game, what kind of decisions they made, then there should be a conclusion. So what are the conclusions? that during the war we need to be uh, we need to fight for survival uh, for the price so what is the price to save our dignity and similar other questions i hope that in real life we will never be um, able to to have a chance to answer such questions yeah but this is just a simulation what is very very significant here uh, is that at the end we need to be self-assessed so we need to assess ourselves and this is a very important aspect of interactive education um, if you're an active participant you make decisions in the game, making decision is the clue of the game. So the sum of the decisions uh, the player made can be um, then, let's say, comes back to the player uh, at the end, like a feedback, and then the player uh, self-assesses himself or herself. So it can um, <clears throat> evoke a pangs of con consciousness, some regrets, uh, 
and other feelings. And I think when people are entering Madrid, they should experience such feelings. Uh, the game was you or has been used many times, uh, but in Poland, Ilona Starosta, a teacher from um, school in Poznan, high school in Poznan, she used this game and she described her observations uh, on her the website on the uh, uh, journal Philosophy, um, you can find her article on there. Here's the link to the article in Polish. But if you Google Ilona Starosta, this word of, of mind and Philosophy, uh, then you will find the article. The second example of the usage of the game uh, is the teacher um, who used the game in the high school in uh, Torun. She um, she, 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 it was a long project, but she uh, activated, the, the game allowed to uh, activate students that were not very active during the lessons, and she was uh, very happy about that. So uh, she was able to speak to them using their natural language. And for the first time, uh, students who were very inactive be became active. Arrest my case, let's say. So uh, this is uh, this game is an example example how how a game can help. So uh, please uh, contact me. Um, Remember, we are also parents and we uh, have this mission. We want uh, that schools have modern, but also very responsible and substantive content. So uh, we want to um, we want to help you. We want to spread the knowledge. With Maciej, we have one more idea. But maybe uh, I can tell you uh, this idea after uh, Maciej's speech. Sorry, I think I was rushing, but uh, now Maciej's turn. Uh, hello, everyone. Could you please uh, could I ask the moderator to switch the presentations? And I just wanted to refer to two things that Pavel talked about, which are very close to my heart, and refer to our experience, uh, our foundation's experience. Uh, games are a tool that activates everyone, and uh, especially they, they, they activate those who can't find their proper role in the classroom. And I think that uh, the, the, the other thing, uh, that was particularly uh, true in this world of mine is uh, making moral choices, especially during ethics classes. Uh, it is useful, but not only that. But why why do I talk about moral choices? From our experience, uh, it's very difficult to create a game that would be moral because villains are always more attractive. Uh, than good guys. You prefer to do things that you wouldn't normally do, uh, like, you know, the, the forbidden uh, forbidden fruit idea. And thirdly, game is a simplification in a way. I'm going to mention one example that we're working on right now. We've created a first phase of the game called Free Election. And this is a political game and uh, uh, usually the players preferred those the most corrupted to win uh, so they said uh, what was the when we when they were asked what was the most motivating there uh, they answered well to win the game they and, and we didn't want that we wanted to share civic uh, attitudes not uh, corrupt people and to convince them that uh, corruption is good so but to begin with I wanted to introduce myself uh, my name is Maciej Pivovarczuk and we try to deal with uh, historical education in a way that is different. Uh, we are not interested in dates, in historical figures. We believe that history is not a memory exercise. We believe that history is a living science, which means that uh, there are always uh, certain events behind these people, these dates, and we want to go behind the scenes. And I think this war of mine shows it perfectly. What is war? 
really war in the aspect that is not presented in course books from the civilian perspective. And we feel that history is a living science because if it's taught well, it allows to develop competences. I'm a historian myself. Uh, it allows to develop competences needed for uh, finding your place in the future, creative thinking, communication, cooperation, things that can appear on a history lesson besides uh, typical exercise uh, exercises. Uh, we don't cooperate with a lot of entities a year. It's not revolutionary, I would say. But still, we're proud that 2,000 students uses our tools, the tools provided by our foundation. And hundreds of teachers cooperate with us. Second thing that distinguishes us, we try to look at history not only as a living science, but also something that connected us with 11-bit studios. Uh, reading history in a universal way and reading it through contemporary uh, digital uh, media. And we use it a lot. As you can see here in the picture, uh, there is a virtual VR cinema that we organized a couple of years ago in Malborg. There is a castle uh, uh, there. And the um, participants had the chance to speak with one of the Polish kings, Władysław Jagiello, or the crusader, uh, crusader Zyder. Dzięki wirtualnej rzeczywistości jesteśmy w stanie być w środku filmu, to znaczy zanurzyć się w tej historii i faktycznie czuć się tak, jakbyśmy byli na polach grunwaldzkich. Możemy porozmawiać z Władysławem Jagiełą, możemy spotkać się z Urlichem von Lingenem. I ostatnie krótkie pytanie. Władysław Jagiełło. Jest kogo się bać? Król Władysław Jagiełło to przeciwnik odważny i niebezpieczny. Dało się poczuć, że, jest, że, jest, że się tam jest. Całe wrażenie było ekstra. Uh, so that was two years ago. Then the pandemics came. We didn't have a chance to return to the project. But in the time the cinema was functioning, we conducted a uh, research, a study that told us a lot uh, on how you can use VR in the learning process. First, what we, we were surprised, it was a great group, 345 people were uh, surveyed. And uh, so, 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 of course, not everyone who participated in the cinema decided to, to do this study, to, to fill out the survey, but uh, it was very positive. The reactions were very positive. 98% of the survey would recommend the VR cinema to, to their friends or family. Uh, especially that the castle of Malborg is not one hour uh, a tour, but five hours tour, and people had time to participate in it, to, took their time in the tour to participate in the cinema. Another indicator? There were tests in, in the survey, there were also questions about facts, uh, specific facts from uh, historical events. Of course, uh, we were not trying to pay attention to these dates and names, but we respect uh, uh, the uh, exams uh, and, and, and the curriculum. So we also have uh, include biographies, dates, and the most important uh, uh, information. 81% of people who were surveyed uh, answered 
correctly to uh, the questions about information included in the video, which means that the immersion is so strong that you're focusing solely on the film, which lasts for 15 minutes, that you remember basically everything, almost everything that you see, because you're fully immersed in the cinema. So you speak with the King Yagello. Uh, so if he explains you his strategy, you tend to remember that. I really like this particular slide. Uh, uh, so it's directed at most of the people uh, who take part in this conference. Most women would recommend uh, it than men, uh, which is surprising. Uh, which might seem it might seem that men are more gadget oriented uh, uh, digital tools oriented but it turns out that women uh, found their themselves better uh, in VR environment so it's surprising but important uh, VR uh, we have already uh, completed one topic, uh, medieval ages, conflict between Poland and Crusader forces. You can learn more on our stand in the Expo Zone. I still have two minutes, so I will try to talk about a, not a VR game, but uh, a game that simplifies certain process of the functioning of the state that we take part uh, as, as, elect, uh, as voters. So about electing a king, electing a, 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 a leader of a state in general. This game talks about a living science because history is written uh, as we speak, uh, right? So, so here you have some current affairs and emotions, uh, strong emotions that were evoked where uh, the capital was taken over by uh, uh, Donald Trump uh, sympathizers. And uh, we talk about social choices uh, during our uh, the talks uh, with teachers as we consult uh, our projects with teachers, uh, uh, different students as well. And it turned out that it's very difficult to teach about elections. So we wanted to create a project that does not evoke any particular emotions, because if you are 17 or 18, people are uh, politically conscious, so to say. So we didn't want to turn it into a political discussion. That's why we moved back to the end of the 16th century. And the, tasks, the task is to elect a new king. And the game is based on the historical figures, and each uh, character, each sorry, students uh, has uh, their own character. Some of them are diplomats. Uh, for example, this is the uh, Moscow uh, side. Then others become the members of nobility uh, or uh, spiritual leaders. And the game starts. This is the sum of decisions that uh, is responsible for uh, this, uh, writing the, 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 the future of the country. So this is the example I said before, that the corrupted win won the game. Uh, so this is, these are the results of our study. Two levels of testing uh, happened. Now we are in the, uh, in the middle of the, writing the third version of the scenarios. Uh, these are the results of the student surveys. And this is, again, surprising. Uh, history is very often difficult to teach. People are very often reluctant to learn history, uh, to remember days and names. So first of all, uh, this game, this lesson uh, was positive, um, uh, described as positive by 90% and 100% of students felt engaged. There was no person who would regret devoting the time to this lesson and didn't feel engaged, didn't feel uh, part of this game. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure if that's repeated when we do really vote during the elections. Unfortunately, not 100% of, of uh, Polish nationals go to, to vote. Uh, and then uh, uh, the, the disadvantage would be that you need a large group of people. It's not, it can't be played in a group of, I don't know, three, four people only. Uh, but 80% would recommend it to their teacher. Uh, we also 
asked some questions about facts and the increase of correct answers was by 25 percent uh, and the the game is called free election uh, because that was a question uh, on the chat uh, we have our stand we are finishing the third story with uh, the third plot uh, and we're entering the third testing phase we would like to conduct on real classes uh, in this uh, in high schools and we would love to visit your school to test it and uh, to test something that we co-create along with 11-bit studios related to this war of mine uh, you mentioned that uh, Sarajevo, you mentioned Sarajevo, you mentioned Wrocław Apri Warsaw Uprising. I know there are uh, these are related to dilemmas uh, that are that are uh, appropriate to not only this particular context. But to sum up, you have our contact details here. Uh, what we are working on right now is, uh, so the company and the foundation are starting a program of creating a uh, educational package uh, about this war of mine. Uh, Again, referring to our, our cooperation, we know that there are there is there is a lot of tools that can make your lessons more attractive. So the problem is how this uh, this tool can be introduced uh, into the curriculum, into the expectations of parents or the headmasters of the school, and getting a good grade. So we take this war of mine and we want to prepare lesson scenarios that will allow for, uh, uh, for introducing uh, uh, this. So, so the children, the students would have to uh, play the game before the lesson and then return to the class and discuss it, discuss different situations, different real life situations. So we want to show that the game uh, may be embedded in a certain universe, but the universe will be, is built based on true testimonies of true uh, war victims. Uh, and and also not only not only based on Sarajevo, but also for example based on Wrocław uh, Warsaw Uprising. Uh, this this educational package uh, should also include all the guidelines uh, and tips. How is the how is the, how how is the game accessed? Uh, how is the game played, and so on. So it's the easiest for you. I know that uh, the time of a teacher is extremely valuable, and you have a lot of work. Uh, my wife used to work as a teacher, so I, I know what I'm talking about. So we want to give you a fully comprehensive package for free, of course, uh, to ease you up um, into the topic, so that you don't. You shouldn't have. You shouldn't. You shouldn't spend hours uh, trying to prepare for the class because I, I know that it's it's a lot of effort. So we want to prepare it for you, and I think we'll be ready around November, December. Let me go through the questions. We will be ready, um, but we, as I said, invite you to to contact us directly because we need some testing grounds. And the game is going to be available for you for free, without any limits. A question to Agnieszka, a request to Agnieszka. Please send our contact details to the conference participants so that they know how can they access us. Let me go through the questions. First one. Eight. So eight class. Eight. Eight. Uh, if there is less than eight people, can they play? They can, but they need to wait. Uh, we are preparing, currently preparing a board game uh, so that the parents, for example, can play with their children uh, and, and smaller groups can play as well. Any games for 10 years old? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I can't say, I can't give you about other information about other solutions. But we're working uh, 
on some solutions that would be designed for, for example, kindergarten or um, primary school teachers. But we need to get a green light from our state administration first. Is VR on the Malborg Castle uh, still valid? Well, you can come to us, we can come to you, uh, but I've, uh, unfortunately this is paid service, but we come with a full set of 25 VR goggles and we um, can do it for you in your school. Um, and do we are, are we working on new projects? Yes, we want to help. Uh, we we talk. We, we create a game about Nikolai uh, Nikolai Copernicus. Uh, so you will help the astronomer to stop the sun and move the Earth. Uh, what is the age for for this more age limit for this world of mine? Eighteen plus. It's Peggy 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 eighteen. I think we've covered all the questions. Visit us on our stand and contact us if you want. Thank you.